superb. They were superb, absolutely superb. To your phenomenal principal, Ms. Dixon, and to the, Dr. Weiss, the best superintendent in the, in the country, to the teachers and staff and all of the parents, and then to the incredible class of 2009. Give yourselves a big round of applause. I am honored to be here for many reasons. The teachers know I spoke here a few years ago, so I'm amazed that you invited me back. But I'm also amazed because I, I checked the, uh, the register, and I've got a number of students coming to UMBC. Sonia, everybody coming to UMBC. There's quite a few of you. Stand up for a minute. If you're coming to UMBC in the fall, stand up and give them a hand. I'm proud of my students. Give them a hand. Whoa. Whoa. That's what I'm talking about. I can sit down now. I'm happy. So I came to get my students, parents, right? I am delighted. And everybody who's going to college, raise your hands right now. Everybody's going, give them all a big hand. Give them all a big hand. It's wonderful. I am so thrilled to be here for many reasons. Young people, I said a minute ago that I was looking at your faces and I was so impressed because you were being attentive. As the students spoke, as your principal spoke, I go to so many commencements around the country, and Ms. Dixon, it's hard to keep parents or students just reserved and dignified, and I come into this place and I see the families respecting their sons and daughters, and I see you as young adults understanding that you have a responsibility to set a tone. And so I come today to congratulate you because from the many, out of the many, there is one voice. And that voice is the voice of the future. You know, it amazes me to think back to high school graduation. I want all the parents and grandparents and families to close your eyes and remember the day you graduated from high school. Whether it was 20 years ago or 40 years ago, whatever it was, you don't even have to tell me how long. And now open your eyes. Students, in some ways, you will close your eyes and before you know it, you would have finished college, you'll have a job, you'll get married, you'll have children, and you'll be sitting out there and your sons and daughters will be sitting right here. It happens just like that. How many of you in the audience can remember when you finished high school? Remember? And now you're thinking, how did I get to be this old? <laughs> it happens before you know it. And so, you see how your parents are laughing? It's true. And so what is it I want you to do? Class of 2009, I want you to center yourselves, to breathe deeply, and savor this moment. The thought I had when I was graduating from high school was that I was worried about college. I was thinking about leaving and thinking about, oh my goodness, I wonder if I'll be okay in college. I'm leaving home, and in some ways I'm glad to be leaving, leaving Birmingham, going up to Virginia. But at the same time, I honestly don't remember taking a minute to enjoy this experience. And so I want you to block out thinking about tomorrow, and I want you for the next five, six, seven minutes to focus on who you are today. I've told this story over and over again that when I was a little kid, Somebody talked about goosebumps earlier. I got goosebumps doing two things, math problems and eating. I loved, I was a fat little kid who was real smart in math. <laughs> and, and the more I loved the math and the better I would do, the more my grandmama would give me food. My mama was trying to get me to lose some weight, but my, mom, my grandmama thought I was healthy with those fat cheeks. She loved them. So my grandmother would make two pies, blueberry pies. This is my blueberry pie story. Some of you have heard it before. One pie was for the family, and one pie was for Fat Freeman, all right? And she would have my name there, for Freeman only, all right? 
And her daughter, my mama, would be really upset with her. And my grandmama would like just to sit there and watch me eat that pie. And I'd have blueberry pie everywhere. Right? And she would say, that's OK, baby. You just enjoy yourself, all right? I can still taste that pie 45 years from the girl. You, I savor that moment. Give me a hand for that blueberry pie. I want you to think about that blueberry pie, all right? Just taste that pie. Enjoy it. Well, that's what I want you to have right now. This is a blueberry pie moment, folks. You've got your families around you. You have made it to this point. You have the future ahead of you. You are young. And yet, as someone said, you know you are young adults. And here is my message, to savor this moment and remember this moment when the times get tough. Because as your families will tell you, every moment is not like this. But this is a good moment when your families are around you. There's another one of those babies who's coming to UMBC one day. I know that. You, you keep crying, baby. It's OK. It's all right. And here's what I want you to think about. I want you to know that you must never stop learning. You must never stop learning. The older I get, the more I realize there's so much more to know. And this is what I want. You know, it's amazing. Samuel Beckett, an Irish novelist, the English teachers know Beckett. Beckett often wrote in French. And he wrote in a book in which the character Malloy studies the dancing of bees. When bees are dancing, they're communicating with each other. And he said this, here is something I could study, the dancing of the bees, all my life and never understand. And the significance was that he said it with great rapture. He was excited because the more he studied the dancing of the bees, the more he began to understand how they communicated. But the more he began to understand it, the more he realized he had so much more to learn. Wisdom, young people, becoming truly educated, has everything with, to do with understanding there's just so much more to do. So much more to do. And so I want you to have that hunger, that thirst for the knowledge. You know, when Sonia was up here, and she's going to be one of my Maha scholars, I was thinking, I'm going to send her back as Dr. DeLaw one day. I was just, Give her a hand. She's going to be Dr. DeLaw one day. She's going to come back here. There's no doubt in my mind. She is going to come back. You know what? With, with teachers, you sent me a young woman named Sasha McGee about eight or nine years ago. And I want you to know in the past year, she just finished, finished UMBC four and a half years ago, just finished her PhD in environmental chemistry from MIT. Give her a big hand for that. Young African-American woman, <laughs> Sasha McGee from Paint Branch High School. Well, that is you, folks. You know, what was not said in the introduction was when I was 12 years old, I had the privilege of marching with Dr. King. I went to